The fact that escaping to an island can make you a grower or not is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. Islands have long been places of evolutionary oddities. After all, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution was born on the Galapagos. The natural isolation of islands create their own mini ecosystems and natural boundaries for evolution to make it go in all kinds of weird ways. And as a result, individual species can be found on islands that can't be found anywhere else in the world. And species that can be found other places often evolve quite differently and rapidly. And one of these particular island evolutionary phenomenons is called dwarfism and gigantism. Now, for many smaller prey animals, islands can be an absolute paradise because with the exception of Epstein Island, islands generally don't have many predators. And because their predators don't have private jets, usually the only way predators can get on an island is if they're birds or small reptiles. As a result, animals that use their small size to avoid becoming lunch suddenly don't need to be so small anymore, so many of them just stop being small. It's a phenomenon called island gigantism. Things like rodents and insects, like look at this giant fucking cricket. And also tortoises like the Galapagos. This actually seems pretty helpful because when you're big it's harder for small predators like birds and reptiles to eat you. It also makes it easier for you to reach stuff like food and leaves that are higher up, like on the top shelf, which I sympathize with because, you know, I'm... I'm short. But while some little animals get big, other animals shrink like Hulk Hogan's ball sack. The larger prey animals, or herbivores at least, because I hesitate to call a hippo a prey animal. Is there anything out there that attacks a murder potato? They tend to shrink to a fraction of their original size. Like deer become eensy wincy. You've never been to Big Pine Key and see the key deer? They are fucking adorable and you can drive there. Uh, although I don't advise tourism to Florida at the moment. And pygmy hippos! Bigger animals like this shrinking make sense too because they don't have big predators that they need to avoid. And there's also just, you know, fewer calories available on an island because you don't have wide open spaces. So the basic principle of weight loss, you eat less, you get smaller. And this is just the evolutionary version of that. And there's predators, which usually get smaller, like these tiny little foxes and stuff. And I guess it's probably because there's less resources for them to go after. But predators seem to do their own thing because occasionally there's two different types of the same species and they just go completely opposite directions. Cause like these island rattlesnakes here, one, one of them got really big and the other one got really small and scientists aren't exactly sure why that is. Is. Their only assumption is that the larger rattlesnake was the first to arrive on the island and filled the large rattlesnake niche. So to avoid that competition, the other rattlesnake, when it arrived on the island, got smaller to fill the small rattlesnake niche. But there's really no exception of like true island gigantism where they get freakishly large, except for the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon's the biggest lizard in all the land, and yet it lives on an island, which doesn't make a lot of sense. As well, reptiles are really good at conserving energy. It takes a lot of energy to move that big body around and chase down prey it needs to catch, and that prey is smaller than it would be on the mainland. So it's hard to find the evolutionary motivation for that particular reptile in that particular place to get that goddamn big. But what if it's not a giant at all? What if the biggest lizard on the planet is actually a dwarf of an ancestor on the mainland that has since gone extinct? The Komodo dragon's ancestors are much larger than it. But did the Komodo dragon shrink because of the same evolutionary pressures that drove all other reptiles? to get smaller in size? Or did it shrink before that because it ended up on an island? Or did it shrink because people suck? Because that's another thing that we threw a wrench in. See, there used to be giant animals everywhere that coexisted with people. Giant armadillos, giant like elk and shit, giant beavers almost as big as your mom's. And many of those animals went extinct for a myriad of reasons, us principal among them. But many of their surviving ancestors are much smaller. And there's a chance that we had a hand in their diminished size as well because when people hunt, we tend to hunt the largest animals and the largest members among those animals. That's partially because we're dicks, but from a primitive standpoint, it makes sense. You know, you get one big animal, it feeds you for a lot longer with a lot less effort than hunting a bunch of smaller animals. So in places like Australia, which is an island, a, a big one, but an island no less, where dwarfism has occurred, there's a possibility that in those particular cases, the species that have experienced dwarfism did so not because they were on an island, but because we made them. But regardless of how much we suck, this is a phenomenon that absolutely does happen without our intervention on smaller and uninhabited islands. And while it is crazy, one of the things that's even crazier is just how fast fast it happens. Evolution usually takes millions of years to create drastic differences in a species. Red deer just off the coast of France dwarfed to one-sixth their size in just 6,000 years. In evolutionary years, that is like a millisecond. Wrangell Island mammoths, the last woolly mammoths to ever live, dying out about 4,000 years ago, they shrank to one-third of their original size in only 5,000 years. That is some astonishing evolutionary speed. And the fact that ending up in an evolutionary enclave can essentially have enormous or incy effects on your evolution, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.